So the old girl goes back up in the slings again to be blocked up on the hard here in Deltaville, Virginia. Hauling out earlier than usual this year. This is June. Normally I don't haul out until September. But if you've been following my videos, you'll recall back in February on the passage from Calabria to Key West, Florida, I discovered that the elbow coming off of the seacock, uh, which goes to the galley sink drain, had corroded and there was a hole in it. And uh, furthermore, the tapered plug to the seacock was fairly badly pitted uh, due to corrosion, and as a result, the valve wouldn't shut off all the way. So I, I did manage a temporary repair with the boat in the water um, by uh, uh, using some JB Weld epoxy and duct tape over the hole. And uh, I also put some epoxy on the pits and the tapered plug and fared it smooth. And I managed to get everything watertight. And I redid the repair again in Miami, and uh, it was watertight. But nonetheless, I was getting tired of worrying about the boat sinking. But before starting in on that project, I'm going to go through the usual rigmarole here. Haul out rigmarole, and starting off with wet sanding the bottom with 80 grit sandpaper. Uh, get it nice and smooth and ready for painting. I'll also scrape off any barnacles and check for blisters. Uh, this past year I put on three coats of Blue Water Copper Shield 45. Um, and it held up pretty well until I got to Florida. And as you can see there were quite a few barnacles uh, started growing on the bottom there. And recall I put on three coats and the first coat was black. Um, the undercoat, and you can see some black poking through. So after about 3,500 miles, it appears I burned through about one to two coats of paint. Recall this is an ablate of paint, so the paint gradually wears away as the boat moves through the water, and that's part of how it, uh, part of the mechanism of how it keeps marine growth off. Okay, so after consulting with some friends of mine and the fellow at the local hardware store I concluded that the best way to remove uh, the through hull is first to cut into the outside mushroom about every 12 degrees, 12-15 degrees so you make about a dozen cuts going around in a circle and you just cut in cut into the mushroom flange at the end uh, right until you get to the fiberglass and then stop and so you'll have it cut up into a dozen or so segments. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a flathead screwdriver, you could use a chisel, and your hammer, and get underneath it on the outside there, and gradually begin bending that, that segment inward, as I'm doing right now. And you can see it's bending. So I just keep hammering there. And once you bend it enough, it'll uh, that part of the, the the outside flange will just break off. See, there it just broke off. And then you move on to the next segment. I found in a few cases I had to hammer it inward and then hammer it back and then hammer it inward again. So it's just to bend it back and forth a couple of times before the before the segment would actually break off. So that's the outside part of this. So now the fun moves on on the inside of the hull. So we gotta try to pull it through from the inside now that we have the mushroom flange off. Okay, well I'm gonna take a break from working on the through hull and work on some other projects. In this case, uh, painting the top sides. I paint them every year. I use bright side polyurethane, which is a one part uh, modified polyurethane paint. It's fairly easy to work with, fairly forgiving, and I find I get a good finish with it. However, it does oxidize, especially around the waterline after about a year or so. 
And I, I found it's it's uh, it's easiest and it looks best just each year just to uh, sand it down and give it a couple of coats of paint. Usually it takes about three coats to get a good finish. And I'm painting in the early morning here because we, we have hot weather. This is Virginia in late June. And so I want to paint before the boat heats up too much, otherwise it'll make it'll make painting and getting a decent finish quite difficult. So everything's just coming along smoothly here. Whoops. My paintbrush just broke. What happened here was the the the, br the bristles all go into a, a some kind of a plug that's made out of glue, and then that goes into the metal sleeve that joins the wooden handle. Um, and that 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 whole that 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 whole glue plug there just just popped out of the metal sleeve. So on the fly here, what I'm going to try to do, and I just broke my drill bit. This is just quite the morning here. What I'm going to try to do is drill through the metal sleeve and in, into the into the plug and then just drive a tack in there so that it, it'll anchor it to the metal sleeve. So we'll see how this works out. back to finish painting this this side of the hull anyway and actually got a pretty good coat of paint here so despite having about a 10 minute pit stop in the middle of the paint job and to fix the paintbrush Okay, so we got to get these bolts off, and these nuts off on the inside here. Actually, these are coming off fairly easily. I'm surprised. They've been in there for over 20 years. So there's nothing holding it on the inside now. So I think the next step, since I can't rotate it without sawing those bolts, uh, the next step we'll try is try banging it from the outside. See if I can put a uh, put a bung in there and then just bang it with a hammer. Maybe I can push it through. So we'll see how this goes. Well, there's no way we're gonna bang this thing in from the outside the way it is. So. Moving on to plan B, which is I'm going to try to drill these backing bolts out once I cut them off. Alright, so we got these, we got them sawed off, these bolts on the backing plates. Then what I'm going to try to do is drill these out and then try to rotate this whole thing with a big lever and see if we can just break. Uh, my guess is this was put in with 5200 and that stuff, that stuff is super sticky. So we got, we got to break the 5200 bond. All right. Well, after figuring out how long it would take to drill these screws out, and the fact that I just broke my drill bit, I'm rever reverting to the renowned hammer and chisel. So I'm just gradually banging that screwdriver and chisel and just keep putting more screwdrivers and chisels in there. It looks like we're, we're getting it to lift up a bit here. The problem is I don't have I don't have good access. I can't bang my hammer in from the other side. Let's see if I can get it in down here. If I, get, if I can get a tap in. Not much room to swing a hammer there. But if I get it in the side, try 
going through this way here. I think I'm feeling something moving here. I think we might be winning here. As usual one thing when you have perfect access it's another thing when you're trying to operate under a fucking bunk excuse the French I reckon and there is daylight <laughs> 